You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hello, hello, single smart female. It's your romantic fairy god. Today we have a single smart female listener question. Now this listener question comes from Miss Amazed and Confused. By the way, I love your name that you gave yourself. Absolutely love it. And Miss Amazed and Confused writes, Dear Jen, I met a guy on a dating app. Before this, I had never met up with anyone unless I already knew them, friend, coworker, etc. I've always had a boyfriend, three long relationships, and just wanted to have fun since I'm newly single. So I did the Netflix and chill for date one, which was my choice and idea. We had sex on date two, initiated by me, and I saw him four more times after that. We had a lot of fun. We went out to eat and went on adventures and snuggled and had deep conversations and had great snacks. Not snacks. (laughs) Sex. Sorry. They probably had great snacks too, but she actually did say sex. You know, when you click, honestly, I haven't clicked this well with a man in over a decade. He stayed at my house for 48 hours straight before. I had to leave out of town. He didn't want to leave. He was vulnerable with me and very sweet and considerate and thoughtful. I didn't think I'd be interested in a relationship, but after getting to know him better, I realized that he had a lot of the qualities I wanted in a boyfriend, so I considered it, or at least someone I want to keep around. Before our last three hangouts, I told him I'd be leaving town for a while. He was eager to make plans before I left, and he initiated the plans. Well, I left, and I haven't heard from him. He never asked when I would be back. It has been three days. I sent him a text the day I left, just thanking him for being vulnerable, expressing that I thought it was cool. He opened up to me about some health issues. He has read receipts and hasn't read my recent text. But I know he has been on his phone because of social media. Did I read the situation wrong? He seemed very interested. Told his friends about me, said he enjoyed my company because we had great conversation and we laughed a lot. And also he said he liked that we both could handle each other's banter. He also complimented me a lot physically. Cute, gorgeous, sexy. Now, radio silence. What the fuck, Jen? Should I cut him? Okay, I'm going to wrap this up really quickly. Should you cut him? Yes. Yes. And you should send me a picture of the knife that you decide to use. No, I'm just kidding. Absolutely, I don't think you should cut him, but we do have things that we need to address here. Now, first one being your date ideas. These are very, very bad mantourage dating ideas. Netflix and chill? No. No, that's, oh, please take advantage of me. You can be very lazy and not have to go out on a date with me. Okay, I don't give a shit if it was your choice or your idea. It's a bad, especially first date. If you're meeting somebody off the internet, do not. Do not, under any circumstances, meet them for Netflix and chill. Do not. Again, do not. It's a safety issue. It's bad mantourage dating form. It's just bad all around. Okay? Sex on the second date. Well, I'm happy that it was your idea, but I don't agree with this either. The more I do this every year, the more I realize most of us want a true connection. Having sex that early, you know, it doesn't set us up for what we really want. Okay, and it's incredibly important that we just accept that most of us want a connection when we have sex, even if it's not going to be a long term connection. We want a real connection. By the way, I want to make it very clear. I'm not coming down on women who have had one night stands. I don't know that I had a ton of one night stands, but I had enough sexual experiences that were on the not fulfilling side because I didn't honor my own sexual time frame that were, you know, shorter term stuff. And I think a couple one night stands, but I want you to know I'm not judging you for that. What I'm saying is you have to own the fact that it's probably not the fulfilling experience that you want, especially when you're trying to figure out what comes next. So, you know, you can have a heavy makeout session, heavy petting, things like that, but don't let them put a penis inside of you yet, especially not on date two. And there's not a specific date, but I know it's not date two for most women. All right. You said you saw him four more times after that. You had a lot of fun. We went out to eat and went on adventures. I love that you did that. Okay. Snuggled and had deep convos and had great sex. You know when you click. Yeah, I know when you click. Yeah, absolutely. 
But here's the thing. Honestly, I haven't clicked this well with a man over a decade. And then what you have built here in this question to me is, I'm just going to tell you right now, my love, you are a serial monogamous, okay? And basically, you were trying to build evidence for going straight into a new relationship. Now, how do I define a serial monogamous? Is This is a woman who only does relationships. She goes from one relationship to another or without waiting a significant period of time between relationships. She only dates one man at a time, going into a relationship after a week or three month if she's lucky. Most of these relationships put her out after a few years. She often ends up settling for men who meet very few of her romantic needs. Okay, so you, my love, are 100% a serial monogamous, okay? No doubt about it. And what you're trying to do right here through the way you've set things up is not truly mantraage dating. It's working on going straight into your next relationship because you're not truly comfortable with mantraage dating. And it's important for you to just admit that. And even though you had a great time, I don't want to take that away from you. You're not really truly dating. You're building a case to go into that next relationship. So now with that said, I want to say something very, very important. And this is quite harsh. But for the love of all that's adored, it's only been three fucking days. Three. You haven't heard from him in three days. By the way, this is why I hate our social media culture, plus these read receipts and all that kind of stuff, is we use this shit to torture ourselves. Like 100% torture. You haven't heard from him in three days. That's a man pause. At best. A man pause. It's not, he's ghosting me, he's gone MIA, things like that. It's a man pause. You told him you were going on a trip. He probably, if y'all have been spending a lot of time together, it sounds like you said he stayed at your house 48 hours straight before you had to leave for out of town. That's a lot of time together. Again, why you're trying to build into a relationship already, but everybody needs some decompression time, especially you. And you're flipping out a little based on three days. So you have to ask yourself, if your girlfriend told you it's been three days, what would you say to her? Would you say, sister? Let me sit you down for a second and let you recognize the fact that it's been three days. In the grand scheme of things, three days is 100% nothing. Nothing. Now, six months, different story. But more so than all that is you're not mantraage dating. And so put that three days aside. You didn't necessarily read any of the situation wrong. It sounds like that he was really into you, but it's not radio silence. Having, you know, an intense connection with somebody and then taking a few days off and not reaching out to them, that is not radio silence, ladies. So I need all of you to relax, to give yourself a break, to not freak out just because his pattern changes a little bit. It doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't like you anymore. More times than not, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. More times than not, it does not mean that. But even if it does mean that for a minute, what really ensures it is how you act in the in-between. So instead of freaking out, this is the proper time to learn how to mantraage date properly because then you can just turn your attention to other people. You can turn your attention to the things that are important in your life. You can turn your attention to other men and you can break this crap ass pattern of being a serial monogamist. All right. This I'm just a relationship girl. Okay, great. Is that working out the way you want it to? Because if it's not, then it's time to change. And if you're here listening to me, There's a part of you that knows that piece needs to change. But at first, it starts by not freaking out, not, you know, even being concerned. Okay, I haven't heard from him in three days. That means so many beautiful things for you. It means you can start developing your mantra. It means that you can go out of town and enjoy whatever you're doing and focusing on that and not having to worry about what's going on with him. It means that you can focus on yourself and it means a whole host of things that has nothing to do with whether or not you read this situation incorrectly. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. Not hearing from a man for three days is a man pause, not radio silence or ghosting. So stop freaking out 
and mentally torturing yourself and instead get back to what's really important in your life. Stat. Hey, lover girl. Don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share this episode with all of your single smart girlfriends. And if you are tired of craptastic dates, craptastic men, and meh or fizzle out fast romantic experiences, then meet me over at secretsocietyofadoredwomen.com to schedule your application interview to work with me directly. Secret Society of Adored Women is a very special and close to my heart, way beyond the podcast opportunity to completely reinvent your dating and love life as it is happening. It's your love life makeover year where you can tell shitty dating experiences and shitty men to kiss your hot ass forever. Secret Society is you having your real life romantic fairy godmama at your fingertips instead of ever wasting another moment trying to figure it out on your own or on one size fits all crap advice about men dating and love. These are the additional pieces that I won't reveal on the podcast or in public. We are going to cover all the ins and outs of mantourage dating, leaving nothing untouched, and I am going to work with you directly to customize the experience to get everything you want out of life and love. But none of this means anything to your love life until you take the small step of courage by scheduling your application interview at secretsocietyofadoredwomen.com. Procrastination is the exclusive killer of all dreams, especially in your love life. It's time to get your dating and love life in order. It's definitely time to stop pretending you enjoy half-ass dating and love experiences. But most of all, it's absolutely the right time to develop your mantourage and let me help you create everything you want romantically.